All right, we have returned to the Trailblaze mission. Let's get these guys. <laughs> Bro, Astrid hit everyone except for the one who is vulnerable to it. What the freak? Running into me. <laughs> My shop team. You couldn't have oh. done it without me. Yo, the music during that fight was so good. And here we are, kind of a new area. This is our chance. Oh my gosh, Trailblazer is so strong, man. Can I go in this room? I can. What's in here? Oh. You. Let's go. Nice, finished him off real quick. Doot, 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 doot. Do, 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 do. Let's go! Proper RPG. Another collectible. Oh, what's that? What did I just get? The well-kept secret of the maintenance department. How long is this? Oh, not, not that long. I'm assuming future books will be a lot longer. Alright, let's keep going. A More characters. Anyone to talk to? March! Best girl! What's up? Oh, that's the planet? I love the scenery. Just the galaxy and then you just see a planet right outside the space station. I love that. And there's a... Is that a hurricane? Oh no. Hey, March! I heard the news! You're coming with us on the express, right? You betcha! Do you want me to come along? Do I even need to say it? I think we're becoming fast friends. Isn't that enough? But you look like you've got something on your mind. Come on, out with it. Oh, how time flies. Getting nostalgic already? You know, when you were passed out, all I thought was I had to look after you. And then you picked up the bat? Just incredible! In the blink of an eye, you knocked that big fella into Mr. Yang's black hole and saved me. I still haven't thanked you properly yet. Nah, we're not splitting up here. <laughs> hey, she's she's a loyal one. She's a loyal one to our friendship. Very committed. I love her so much. She's one of my favorite characters. How did you join the Express? I'd like to know too. I was already on the train when I woke up. Oh yeah, she was wrapped in ice and then the Express found her and then they got her out of the ice and then she doesn't remember a thing, right? I was just drifting out there in space and got picked up by the Express. Amazing, right? Yeah. Does that kind of thing happen often? Crazy stuff like that? Not too often. It sure freaked me out. But every encounter I've had since coming aboard the Express has been strange to say the least. For example, going to the desert to catch something called a sandfish, correcting a gravitational field to flip an upside down castle, or almost getting my head cracked open by a Galena ball falling from the sky while trying to avoid a sleeping reindeer on the road. <laughs> Sounds like she had quite the, the adventures already. I would like to do that stuff too, like go to a desert planet or go to like a medieval planet for a castle, I don't know. Huh. Looking back now, it all seems quite dangerous. But I had the crew there with me, so the problems didn't seem all that bad. Yeah, the Astral Express and the rest of the Trailblazers got your back. I'm thinking about if I should get on the Express. Of course you should! Why wouldn't you? There's only four of us now, plus Pom Pom. Each of us can have our own carriage to sleep in. You wouldn't have the heart to leave your carriage unmanned, would you? Mm-hmm. That sounds more like a problem for you guys. I don't know what the carriage is like. Then come aboard and take a look for yourself. Let me think things over. I'll be waiting for you. Aw, loyal. Hold on, I want to take a screenshot of this. That's adorable. There we go. I want to take a picture. Just me and March. Let's have you look at the camera. And... Adorable. There we go. I'll do the same thing with Himiko as well. I'm assuming she moves once I talk to her, so I'm just gonna take a picture as well. Boom. Himiko! So, have you thought things through? I still have something to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, speak your mind. Oh shoot, I am staring way too hard. Thank you. <laughs> There's no need to be so formal. You helped us defeat that big fella anyway. Plus, if we keep making pleasantries, we'll waste a whole day. 
You've done me a huge favor by defending the space station from the Antimatter Legion. And know that while Herda may not admit it, she owes me one. She won't refuse me if I ask for a favor in return. And it's probably not too much to ask for a rare item from the space station, right? How about we continue talking on the express? I'll make you a cup of coffee. My special blend. Oh, what are the ingredients? Oh, we can do... We can have more than just coffee, Miko. Have you taken care of everything you need? <laughs> I was ready ages ago. <sighs> I've been here so many times before. It should have just been an ordinary trip for me. But everything's not so ordinary anymore, is it? Walking the same path over and over will never be the same. There will always be something new. That's the meaning of trailblazing. Ooh, nice. What's the next stop for the express? As always, to follow in the footsteps of Akivili. Sometimes we stop on other worlds and we'll continue to do so. There are countless next stops in the galaxy. Hmm, that's true. Who knows how many planets and how many adventures we're gonna have. I love the vast reaches of space, and the Express does too. I want to seek out new worlds, and the Express wants to return to its former path. Hmm, same. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Why invite me to join? Because you're different. Because of the Stellaron? I'm very self-aware. Well, that might be the biggest reason. It's not the only one. I think you need a chance. A chance to discover just how different you really are from everyone else. Everybody keeps telling you how special you are and how you have a Stellaron inside you, but that's already plain as day to you. Mm -hmm. And no matter who tells you, be it me or Herda or anybody, it's not the same thing as feeling it yourself. True. You have to experience enough to know if you've gained or lost anything because of the Stellaron and to know who you really are. Learn to control the Stellaron, and then you can control your destiny. Gonna have to talk to Kafka about that. The Stellaron might still be an enigma, but the fact of the matter is, it's a part of you. And you have to embrace this before you can move forward into the future. Hmm. I don't have any more questions. So, have you thought things through? I want to join the Express. Then come with me. Okay. The Ooh, song! Let's go! I'll be waiting Time to get on. Till we oh my gosh. Mother? Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> I'll be seeing you later. I'm over here! Oh, pom-pom. Come with me, take the journey. <laughs> Yo, that song was really good. Over there looking dumbfounded. Yes, Pom Pom's talking to you. The song is playing in the background. Till we make it to the day to celebrate. I'll be Yo, give me, give me all of Honkai Star Rail's OST right now. I would pay anything. Pom Pom's talking to you. Yeah, that's freaking Pom Pom. Himiko told Pom Pom about your situation. Now listen up. Pom Pom will only say this once. What is it? Pom Pom's sure there have been lots of people telling you how special you are lately. But this is the Astral Express. And everyone on here has their secrets. Since you chose to board, you can abide by the rules. You're not the only special one here. You'd best remember that. I'm Pom Pom, the conductor. Just come find me if you have any trouble. Okay, thank you. My heart lies with the stars. Interastral guide. Complete operation briefing according to the instruction to obtain rewards. Oh, so this is like the adventurer's handbook. This is the operation briefing. Gotta get all these rewards. Claim the rest of these. Nice. Oh, nice. We got Himiko and Welt Yang. Welt. Oh, it's you. How do you feel? Tasteful? I don't know if that's a feeling. I'm full of energy now that uh, I'm on the Astral Express and I've yet to go to another world and journey with you guys, so. <laughs> Great. Looks like your stamina is really quite special. In any case, I have to thank you for saving March. Yeah, of course. But you're the one who saved me. You guys saved me too. I couldn't just stand by and watch. 
All I did was calm that thing inside you down temporarily. I don't want to frighten you, but the truth is you won't ever be in the clear while it's still inside your body. Yeah, that is true. I don't know if the Stellar Run is powering my, my whole life. It's like the essence of my existence. Maybe you can, can you just take it out of me and then I'll just become my own individual person? But maybe I might lose my, my elemental powers or something like that. However, as long as the Stellaron is still in your body, you should be careful what you do. I don't know if Himiko and I can suppress it again. But I won't bore you any longer. So much happened at the space station, you must be tired. There should be some time until the next warp jump, so feel free to walk around and familiarize yourself with the environment. Thanks, Welt. You the goat. Himiko. What do you think? Does the Astral Express look the same as you imagined? It looks like a train. I feel like it's missing something. Yeah, it, it just looks like a train. Everyone on the Express is a passenger. We're all heading towards an unknown destination. Like, we're traveling together. Maybe that's why the Trailblaze chose such a look. Oh, right. March and Don Hung should both be in their rooms right now. You can go look for them. You youngsters should get along well. What about here? We usually meet up here, but our personal cabins are in the next carriage. Also, don't mind Pom Pom's antics. They're actually pretty interested in you. Mm. It's just that we haven't had new passengers on the Express for a long while. All right, I won't steal Pom Pom's thunder. <laughs> if you have any questions, just go ask our conductor. Okie dokie then. To continue the quest, I have to talk to Pom Pom. What's this? Okay, never mind. What's this? Himiko likes using the phonograph a lot. She says it can play melodies from the past. Oh. Welt likes collecting these jet black discs. It seems like they could be antiques. He'd be very happy if you could bring a few back. Rightly assuming they are music discs. It looks like one right here. Oh. Timeline, the game is on, science fiction, spacewalk, salty moon, take the journey. Use the phonograph to change the music when on the express. By exploring various worlds, you can obtain new records to unlock new tracks. Oh, there's more. I don't know if we want to be too upbeat here in the Astro Express. Oh, this sounds good. I might do science fiction. Or I might do spacewalk. Ah, these tracks are just so good sounding. <laughs> this is quite the the humorous crew. I like all these, like all these tracks already fit the the vibe of the Astral Express already. Take the journey. Okay, that's that one. Timeline. I don't know which one to choose. I'll do Spacewalk. I'll do Spacewalk. Oh, and there's descriptions for each song, I think. Out of Control album. Bubblegum, potato chips, and iced soda. All is ready, and Silverwolf's favorite show is about to start. Science fiction. While fantasy longs to lead the world astray, science had steadily and soberly chosen its path. Spacewalk. Step outside and enter the sky. Transcend the light years and roam the stars. Salty Moon. Recipe. Wildfire soaked magwe. I'm not really familiar with this word. A lemon slice charged with murder. Whoa, and a handful of salt fermented from the tears of stars. Quite the description. Take the journey. No one knows what awaits them ahead on the journey, so just taking this first step can be daunting. Timeline. Once upon a time, you set your foot on your journey from here. I'll do spacewalk. I don't know if this is a feature in the game yet, but I hope that we get to decorate hey, our own. You don't have any questions to ask Pom Pom? <laughs> Not yet. Is it because you think Pom Pom talks too much? Or is it Pom Pom's age? You youngsters gotta learn to bridge that generation gap. I swear it's not- I, I'm just busy, okay? Where's March 7th's room? Oh? Why are you interested in her room? Uh, no reason. Ah, oh, Pom Pom remembers Himiko saying that you saved her. Yep. Mmm, very brave. Very foolhardy. But that is what a trailblazer should be like. And she said that she hasn't thanked me properly, so... Hey, hey, yeah, boy. March 7th's room is in the express sleeper compartment. 
She's always running around, so she might not be there. About Don Hung's room. Don Hung's room? Oh, you mean the archives. Uh, he's just sort of living in there, I guess. I can't be bothered getting him out. March 7th's room is right next to the archives. You can visit him on the way. Sure thing. Is that a phonograph? You recognize this as well? Uh, Himako always likes to bring back weird junk and try to fix it. That also got modified a bit. Oh, nice. That's all my questions for today. Pom Pom still needs to prepare for the Express's warp jump. You can look around the place yourself. No matter where you go on this train, Pom Pom will always have my eyes on you. <laughs> He's like Paimon. Alright, let's go on to the passenger cabin. Let's go see Don Hung and March. Hello. There seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. Who's there? It's me. Oh, it's you. The door is not locked. Come in. Okay. Ooh. The archives, huh? This must have like a bunch of information on it. And this is some of the worlds we're going to maybe? I wonder what this galaxy map covers. Hmm. Especially with all these dials and stuff. Dun hung. And then this is just where you sleep. Very interesting room you got here. Dun hung. Can I help you? Just looking around. Feel free. This is open to everyone on the express. Your room? While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the express. I enter the collected data into the archives data bank. I try to catalog the people and places the express encounters and compare and contrast them with the existing records. Do you see the terminal over there? It can be used to view information already stored in the databank. Do give it a go. Okay, dokie. I'll be entering any new information we encounter on future journeys, so drop by any time to check it out. We also have a shortcut on the terminal device. I didn't take you to be a scholar. I didn't know you could fix computers so well. You know what? I'm not a... <laughs> <sighs> He's not an engineer. I have matters to attend to. Feel free. Don Hung the NG main. Okay, what is this? Oh! Oh wow, the databank stores various information collected during trailblazing expeditions across the universe. Open the character screen. Oh no way, bro. Holy cow. I get to see my characters. Oh, oh my gosh. In the databank, you can view each character's story and voice lines. Voice line. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, I have to upgrade them to know their lore. It can be up to level 80, wow. Traces, Adalons. Oh, wow. Not indexed? I'm assuming, of course, I don't have them yet. This is all, and then we can even filter them out via paths. That's amazing. This looks awesome. And then this whole character list will grow. Like, I can't wait to have a full page of destruction or abundance, you know. But yeah. These are all the current characters that are in version 1.0. There are about 6 by 3, that's 18, that's 21 characters so far in 1.0. Consisting of the, the Astral Express, the Herta Space Station, Bellabog, and the Gienzo. Nice. All the light cones, pretty much all the weapon archives, and all their paths belonging to that. We have, oh, all the factions. Oh, I did, oh, I should read all this. Uh, and they also have even like related books connected to this one. Oh, this is awesome. I will definitely be reading over this. We have all the Aeons. Oh, wow. Oh, I should take note of these. But if I learn anything new, then I will write it down. Of course, an enemy archive. Fragmentum monsters. Hero 6s enemies. This Warp Trotter is different from the Antimatter Legion. That's, that's interesting. Relics. Pretty much the artifact system. Terms. Oh, so why are terms completely different? Of course you have the locations and you have characters and technology. Is it because I want to learn more about the universe? The imaginary tree theory, wow. So I think I'm gonna make a separate video concerning like all these factions or just me reading the factions and taking notes of the aeons and terms. I'll definitely be going over all that. All right, on to March 7th room. You knock, but there's no response. The door is unlocked. Should I go in? I don't want to fall into the anime trope, okay? Where you just open the door and March 7th is doing something really sussy. So I'm just... <laughs> Never mind. Uh, better to wait till the room's owner comes back. Ahem. Hi. Hello. A 
Attention all passengers. Attention all passengers. The express is about to conduct a warp jump. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. I repeat, the express is about to conduct a warp jump. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. Okay. Door is locked. Peculiar scent of coffee. Oh, this is Himiko's room. Door doesn't even move an inch as if it's glued in space. Got a whole bunch of photos here. Ooh. And artworks as well. I don't want to seem like a jerk. Oh, this is March's room. Oh, this is adorable. I'm, I, I, I would never do this IRL, by the way. But holy cow. Oh, the dressing mirror. Like, March 7 likes to dress Pom Pom up in more outfits. This is a shy full-length mirror. No matter how much you fiddle with it, it won't move. Wall of photos. Oh, this is so cute. You have Himiko, you got March 7th, and Dan Hung. You got the Doomsday Beast that we fought. You got Asta. More cute artworks on her wall. You got a couple cameras. Bro, this is actually how I would imagine March 7th's room to be like. I'm glad the Astral Express has given her a, a, a home or like a place to stay. Because she made it this way and... She wants to stay as uh, as positive and as fun and bubbly as she can because that's that's what she wants to portray instead of her her fear and anxiety of knowing about her past rest area. This cozy rest area is in stark contrast to Don Hung's sparse floor bed next door. Pom Pom's toy, conductor Pom Pom's doll. It doesn't have any clothes. The bed, March seventh's bed. Several photos are casually strewn on the duvet. Desk. March 7th's desk. All kinds of gizmos are strewn about it. I would have been really scared if she just appears like right here. That would have been really bad. The photos on this wall flash and blink, filled with memories of your adventures. I want- okay, in future versions, as we play the game, I want this wall to be updated. Like instead of us, like our adventures so far from the Herta space station, I want more photos of like us in Bellabog or in the- or in the Gienzo. That would be awesome. Oh, what's this? A bookshelf. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so I can not only access the bookshelf here, but also when I press escape and also the the books are over here. What is this? Another bookshelf. Oh, so it's the same thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, March. I need to talk to you. Oh my gosh. Uh, Pom Pom just walking around is so cute. Oh, guess you're just gonna walk away. March! Uh, there you are! Yes. Wait, this is your first trip. So that should be double the excitement, right? <laughs> I guess so. I'm still a little worried about what lies ahead. I'm ready to go. That's the spirit. <laughs> I was excited the first time I experienced a warp jump too. But I'm used to it now. Don't worry, you'll get used to it too. And before you know it, you'll be a mature and dependable passenger just like me. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. You can't just grab something like that. Okay, got it. You really got it, huh? The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. Is this some sort of mumbo jumbo about transferring consciousness? Okay, I'm ready for step three. You know what? Uh, let's feed the let's feed the positivity that March seventh is giving off. I really want to be just as excited as her. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might! Okay, well I've cast out all the anxiety now. Really? I've never been able to do it successfully myself. I've learned from the master. What does it feel like? Like all your worries have been swept away? Oh... Please don't be just as anxious, March. Please don't do this to me. Please, I'm here for you, gosh dang it. Let's talk to Himiko as well. What's wrong? You look like you were about to say something. Oh, I think I know what you're going to ask. You've come to the right person. Okay, so about the Express. Ooh, you want to know more about the Express? I'm glad. After all, it's an important companion of ours. Oh my gosh, there's more. More to digest. About the history of the Express. The Astral Express was a tool created by Akivili the Trailblaze, who used it to transport themselves and the Nameless across the galaxy. It is rumored that there are other vehicles like it, but the Express has no such records. 
Okay, so the Astro Express was made by Akivili, the trailblaze, used to transport themselves and the nameless. When I found the Express, its memory had been severely damaged, mm -hmm. with much of its valuable information lost. All I know is that the Express is an aspect of creation built by Akivili themselves and used to travel the cosmos. An aspect of creation, huh? I'm not really familiar with the term. As for how it was built and how it was damaged, I do not have an answer. Yeah, so the Express landed on her planet when Himiko was young. How it got there, or how it was damaged, as she just said, uh, she doesn't know. And then she decides to help fix it and then be a part of it. I think that's what happened. About where the Express is headed. The Express is traveling on a route that the Trailblaze once embarked on. The names of some destinations have been lost, but the first and final stops were both at Pagana, Akivili's homeworld. Ooh, the Express is on the same route the original Trailblazer embarked on. First and final stops of the Express was Pagana, Akivili's home. I need to write down who's saying all this as well. We speculate the Astral Express started its journey from Pagana, stopping at each destination along the way before returning there for its next journey. Mm. However, the appearance of the Stellaron has caused a delay at each stop. Ooh, interesting. But this is only speculation though. So it's making a round trip to multiple worlds, but Pagana is the home planet that they would go to. Obviously because Pagana is Akivili's home world. About the Express's source of power. There's a legend in the galaxy. The heart of Akivili themselves lies in the core of the Astral Express, providing it with the power to travel between worlds. But I found no evidence of that aboard the Express. Well, that's only legend. Might be true. Besides, the Express existed before the Trailblaze fell. There's mm. no way they could have had two hearts, right? However, it is likely that the Express possesses some sort of mechanism to transfer power from the Trailblaze. It wouldn't be possible with a normal Path Strider. Path Strider? About Akivili. The Fallen Eon. Deceased Trailblaze. Their passing is still a mystery, but of all the known Eons, Akivili was the closest to mankind. Fallen slash deceased Aeon? Their passing is still a mystery. How is unknown? Was the closest to mankind? In the data bank aboard the Express, it is recorded that they walked among the mortals, adventuring, fighting, and celebrating with them. Mm. Although they were an eon restrained by the Prima Mobile, Akivili enjoyed a freedom similar to us mortals. Ooh. So Akivili pretty much affiliated themselves with people, but they were restrained by the Prima Mobile. They were different from most. But their passing came so suddenly that it was thought they were killed by another eon. I don't believe that to be the case. No body, no death? Possibly killed by another aeon, but also more unlikely. Possibly killed by another aeon. Let's just keep it at that. I have another question about the galaxy. <laughs> the galaxy is endlessly vast. Yep. I wouldn't know where to begin, especially when you ask me like that so suddenly. About its nature. <laughs> I've been to many different worlds, yet I still know very little about the galaxy, simply because it's too vast. As for its nature, there are a few theories that I can share with you. Hey, yo. The most popular is probably the Cosmos Tree Theory, proposed by Xandar, emanator of erudition and the first member of the Genius Society. He compared the galaxy to an enormous imaginary tree, with its leaves being individual universes. Oh gosh, it's the freaking Hoyoverse. How many games are Hoyoverse gonna come out with just so that this, like, every leaf on the tree will be known? Xander, emanator of erudition. Yep, he was also the first of the Genius Society. A galaxy to be a, an enormous imaginary tree. Therefore, only eons who draw their energy from the imaginary and emanators who are blessed by eons can travel through the spaces filled with imaginary energy. That's why planets where civilizations exist are so similar. Holy cow. I am loving that this lore is voice acted. Aeons draw their energy from the imaginary, whilst emanators are blessed by aeons and can travel through spaces filled with that energy. 
However, the theory has its flaws. Elias Salas, the 56th member of the Genius Society, invented remote detection, disproving that the imaginary is unique. This shook the foundation of the cosmos tree theory. Remote detection, proving that the imaginary is unique. There are other theories as well. The stretching theory, the heat torch theory, and the parallel imaging theory. The Riddlers claim the galaxy is just a dream, and IX's followers seem to like that claim. IX's? I would imagine that's just nine, but no, that's that's IX. There's other theories. Stretching theory, heat torch, parallel imaging. Riddlers? A title or a name we don't know what to associate that with. Riddlers claim galaxy is just a dream. And IX's followers are attracted to that. About the Aeons. Aeons are the most mysterious beings in the galaxy. All we know is that they ascended from the form of intelligent beings. As for the how and why, even the geniuses over at the Genius Society haven't the slightest clue. They ascended from the form of intelligent beings. The gods. Deities over all existence. GS don't know anything about them. Upon ascending to Eonhood, that being gains power over the paths, free to choose the allocation of imaginary energy however they wish, while suffering the restrictions of the Prima Mobile. Those beings gain power over paths, free to choose allocation of energy, while suffering the restrictions of Prima Mobile. I don't know what that is. Does that kind of power come with a great price or something like that? And because they've ascended to Aeonhood, they can't really do anything except for run a certain galaxy slash universe and maybe cause them to be in a state of complete stasis or immobilization. Primum mobile. Primum, I'm assuming that means like first or top or like the head ranking. I don't know. Hmm. The Eon of Destruction seeks only to destroy the universe, while the Eon of Erudition wants to find the answer for all that exists. Meanwhile, the Eon of Preservation continues to forge walls, and the Eon of Enigmata devotes itself to obscuring all that is known. Okay. Destruction. They want to destroy. Destroy! Build! Destroy! Pretty much. Erudition. Find answers for everything. Preservation. Forge walls. We have to build a wall. We're going to build a wall. Enigmata. Obscuring all that's known. So maybe destroy all knowledge? Hmm. A cloud of mystery shrouds the eons. I heard Madame Herta recruited a team to try and solve the mysteries about them. Factions. Compared to the eons, the factions are much easier to understand. Oh, thank you. Mortals with the same objective gather together to practice their understanding of eons and paths. Factions are like aeons, but they're mortals with the same objective. Ooh. Many eons are unreachable, but the factions are close to us. After Akivili trailblazed across the galaxy, people became aware of the existence of other worlds. Gradually, more people started trying to use the power of the eons to travel between worlds. I'm gonna say Akivili exposed the existence of other worlds. More people started trying to use the power of the Aeons to travel between worlds. The Interastral Peace Corporation is a good example. They worship Klopoth, the Aeon of Preservation, but somehow became the largest economic entity in the galaxy. Hmm. IPC worships Klopoth, became the largest economic entity. Another example is the Genius Society. There are no shortages of eccentrics like Madame Herda who dedicate themselves to scientific research under the protection of the erudition. These factions possess the same power as us to voyage between worlds. Mm -hmm. It would be hard to travel through the galaxy without them. That is true. About the paths. The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. The nature of the paths remains a mystery, leaving us to draw an analogy in a way that mortals can understand. It's a philosophical concept of sorts. I'm kind of interested in the topic of philosophy. That's why I already love Punkai Star Rail. Not only is it space and sci-fi driven, of course it has an anime-esque and it's made by Hoyaverse, but I just love the concepts and perspectives that these characters have and the lore that this universe brings. I think it's really good. New Aeon, new path. But the nature of the path is unknown. 
That's why we have to come up with theories and analogies to understand it. We have to theorize and analyze to understand the path's nature. A person is considered to be on a path when their will overlaps with that path. If the person has a strong enough will, they can draw power from that path. Those who can do so are called path striders. Gotcha, gotcha. Path striders draw power from a path. So it's all in the mind. Like if I put my head to it, I can draw power from a certain path and I will be considered a path strider. Gotcha. Path striders possess extraordinary power, but are still insignificant compared to the eons. Obviously. Like a drop of water in a vast ocean. Mm-hmm. Sometimes eons will bestow a mortal with their power, making them an emanator of that eon. Ooh, okay. Aeons give mortals their power, making them an emanator of that aeon. Gotcha. I should mention that once a path is open, it cannot be closed, even with the fall of its eon. That is how we are still able to travel across the stars, mm. despite Akivili's passing. Paths cannot be closed, despite... The Aeon's death. Wow, there's so much lore in this. I've piped down a lot from Himiko. I can understand more about the Aeons just by talking to Himiko or Herta. And I love that. I love that about them. And Himiko's simply just a navigator for the Astral Express and she knows this much. Wow. About the Trailblaze. Trailblaze is our mission and the source of strength that powers the Express to travel across the galaxy. About exploration. Explore the unknown world to continue our journey ahead. Understand the local culture and immerse ourselves within it. Yo, 100% immersion, total immersion in this game. You love to see it. Establishing. Establish a connection with the new world. Rejoice with it and share in its fears. So basically, you gotta discover new things. You gotta understand the people and the world you're in. And then establishing a connection. Put yourself in the shoes of the the cities and the people that you're gonna meet. Connect worlds together, carving an endless path. Mm-hmm. Connect worlds together. That's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Yumiko. You're you're one of the freaking lore goats of this game. Thank you. Huge thank you. Alright, Pom Pom. I'm ready to go. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I thought Welt was gone, but he's just back here. This is your first time experiencing the warp jump, so a little discomfort is unavoidable. If you're really anxious about it, I can stay here and have a chat with you. Please hold my hand. <laughs> okay, about our companions. I I'd like to get to know more about uh, Don Hong, March 7th, Himiko. About everyone on the Express? Uh, who would you like to know about? Himiko. <laughs> She's the owner of the Express. We joke around calling Pom Pom the conductor, but <laughs> everyone knows Himiko is the boss. Oh, she is a boss. Holy cow. She's a freaking queen. Are you kidding me? It all started with her encounter with the Astral Express, and they haven't been apart since then. I wonder how long it's been since then, though. She's extremely passionate, like a, a burning sun. However, she remains mysterious most of the time once in a while you feel that she's burning herself out trying to accomplish her dream i can tell you care very deeply about her only someone like her is worthy of the astral express mm -hmm. i think himiko's vision of her whole life revolves around uh, a very important dream Pom Pom. To be honest, I don't know when Pom Pom appeared. Uh, I think it was before I came to the Express. No, wait, maybe it was after. Pom Pom is like the spirit of the Astral Express. Whenever anyone on the Express needs help, they will appear immediately. It would be ill-advised to underestimate them. So basically a spirit animal, a spirit bunny for the Astral Express. Pom Pom is terrifying when they <laughs> get angry yes it's terrifying okay i'll keep that advice in mind well thank you about don hung dan hung is a lonely child he may appear distant and cold but his heart is kind perhaps he's the way he is today because he spent so much time on the run 
sometimes he reminds me of myself when I was young. Yeah, Don Hong is really running from his past. Doesn't want to face the Jianzo again. He used to work at the Xianzhou. Mm -hmm. We don't know what he's running from. Blade? He once told me that he didn't know either. All he knew was that something was chasing him and that he had to run. Oh gosh, I can understand why. He's definitely running from some type of court case or judgment concerning Jin Yuan and Blade. So he boarded the ship of a troop called the Morning Actors mm. and escaped the IPC. After a while, he made his way to the Express and he's stayed here longer than anywhere else. The Morning Actors. He was running for the IPC, eventually coming to the Astral Express. Don't worry. No matter who or what wants to hurt Don Hung, we won't let them. Yep. Those who dare attack members of the Astral Express should be prepared to suffer the wrath of me and Himiko. They're like mother and father over us children. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. About March. Did Himiko tell you about March 7th? She was trapped in ice floating through space. Mm -hmm. We happened upon her and rescued her. It was a unique type of ice known as six-phased ice, a substance that adheres to imaginary law, meaning that external forces cannot change its form. Six-phased adheres to imaginary law. Imaginary law. External forces cannot change its form. Oh, that's interesting. Whoever sealed her inside the six-phased ice, no matter who it is, did so either to protect her or banish her. Mm. I believe she had been floating through space for some time. See, that's that's a thing we have to think about or theorize on. Literally these two words here. To protect her from destruction. About maybe her world was about to be destroyed. And then she was sealed in ice. And then when that world was destroyed, she was the only survivor. Or maybe she was banished. She was punished for breaking a certain law on their world. And so she was sent out into the universe to never be seen again because of what she did. Or maybe it was something completely different. Who knows? Another question about the Stellarons. It's impossible to trace the origins of this phenomenon. When it's observed by humans, or should I say, once it begins to affect the physical world, it's already too late to reverse. It's like a sudden storm that appears on a calm ocean. This phenomenon causes the smooth journey through the expanse to be filled with dangers. The mechanism whereby this mutation and corrosion spreads is the Stellarons. It promulgated rapidly like cancer cells, so the International Peace Corporation named it the Cancer of All Worlds. Here's your new title, your new name, Cancer. Because <laughs> it spreads nothing but like mutation, corrosion, destruction. Antimatter Legion. They are the army ruled by the Eon of Destruction, Nanook. The army of Nanook. The anti-matter legion, the AML. AML, army of Nanook. As Nanook's followers, they stand against all life and civilization and execute the will of destruction, disseminating chaos and calamity. Their actions cannot be explained by reason because their only motivation and purpose is to destroy. That's so sad. Ah, and me the trailblazer? also follows that path? That's kind of sussy. Or maybe I'm gonna harness my Stellaron destruction power to face off against Nanook. About the Fragmentum. Fragmentums are a phenomenon of corrosion. The mainstream school of thought is that Stellarons catalyzed the appearance of Fragmentums. All matter and space that comes into contact with the Fragmentum will be turned into Fragmentum creations. However, you don't have to feel too burdened. At the very least, the current state of the Stellaron in your body is very stable and will not cause distortion to the outside. Thank you. No other questions. Thank you, father figure of the Astral Express. Okay, I think we are finally ready to keep going with this, uh... Oh. pom was just randomly sweeping. Okay, I think we're finally ready to continue the Trailblaze mission. Talk to Pom-Pom. <sighs> you took long enough. 
But at least everyone's here now. Hey, I was taking note of all the phenomenal and exciting lore that comes from this game, Pom Pom. Please be patient with me. Where's Dun Hung? He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. What is it? A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. Is it another Adalon? Oh, never mind. They're just rewards. Pom-poms are Catherine. Oh, how many are we gonna... Oh, I think up to level 9? Every 5 levels is one Star Rail Pass, maybe? But I'm happy to be getting all these materials. I think up to level 9. Yep. Okay, everyone. Hurry up and find a place to sit down. Try not to be like March. Always running around the express like a headless chicken. <laughs> Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. Let's go! The voyage continues. Today is yesterday's tomorrow. Oh, I get friends now. Ooh. View the friends you've added from the friend screen. Alright, let's wait for the jump. 